I love separating concerns when it comes to building out my applications. And for the backend, we've had the microservices architecture paradigm for a while now, but now we can do the same with micro frontends for the frontend. Now, I know this is not actually something new, but I don't see people talking about it too much. So let's dive deep into it. I'm going to be talking about what micro frontends are, how they work, why they're useful, and I'm going to show you an example how you can set one up. A micro frontend is a development approach where the web application's frontend is divided into smaller self-contained modules. And each module can be developed, tested, deployed on its own, allowing teams to work on different functions of the application. And where micro frontends really shine is in an enterprise level application. You see, when an application grows to an enterprise level, you'll often see people thinking of microservices and dividing the responsibilities of the backend and trying to get as much resources to work on the app without them interfering with each other. Now, if this was only one application, like a monolith in one repo, 12 people working on the same code at the same time can be challenging. You have merge conflicts, you'll have features clashing with each other and whatnot. But that's where dividing the application into smaller chunks, whether it's the backend or the frontend, really helps. Each of these chunks, microservices, micro frontends, whatever you want to call it, can be one repo on its own and can be developed, tested, deployed separately from the rest and have each team be responsible for one or however you want to decide that. But these are now smaller contained chunks that are not interfering with each other, but when brought together, they work flawlessly. And this is a very famous paradigm. I love the most famous websites use it like Netflix and YouTube and, and also another good thing about this is if there's a bug in one of these micro frontends or like one of them breaks completely the app still works you still have the other micro frontends or the other microservices working without interruption for example net Netflix if we say that the login is one micro frontend the list of all the movies is another micro frontend and your profile and settings is a third micro frontend if the profile settings break, everything else is still gonna work. Like if you have a JavaScript error, one of those, everything else is still gonna work. But if if you have a one repo with one code, if you have a JavaScript error or something that breaks the app completely, then none of it works. So that's also a very good side effect, I guess, from micro frontends. And I'll put a link in the description of an article I found of someone going through what Netflix's micro frontends would look like or whatever they imagine look like. I'm not actually sure if that's exactly how Netflix works, but, but the article is great. It goes through the scenario one, step by step, understanding how these micro frontends would work together. I'm on, I want to focus more on the example that I have prepared here and how to actually set this up for your project. The idea for micro frontend, the way I understand micro fronts is basically we have all of these libraries or packages or whatever. You can have your whole app as a package, right? But then for every change you make, you have to have a new package version, then deploy that version, package version, then pull that into your project and deploy your project. But with micro frontends, the way it works is you make the change in one of the micro frontends and the rest just pick it up because it pulls the data directly from there. And I'll show you how. So the one way I've set this up before is using Module Federation. It's a plugin for Webpack and probably for some other compilers as well. Um, but the one I've used with is Webpack and the one I have set up here is also Webpack. I have a project here with a shell and two remotes. Now the shell is what combines the two remotes together. And you can think of this like an aggregator of all the different micro frontends in your app. This is the shell module federation definition. And we can see here the name is shell. This is the file name with, from which the JavaScript is being compiled to. And we have two remotes here, which are remote one and remote two. And we can share dependencies, which is also another great thing with module federation and micro frontends. This means that our dependencies are not imported multiple times. Like we don't need to import React three times for each of the micro frontends. We just need, we only need to import it once and it's going to work for all of them. Cool. So now let's go to remote one module federation. And here we can see 
is defined very similarly has the name the file name this is called different here it's called remote entry but this is basically what the file in my dist folder is gonna be and if i look here i can see the remote entry being compiled here now this example also has a server because it's using server components but that's beyond the point um, it doesn't really matter to be honest and we can see that the remote one doesn't have any remotes defined here which means that it's not pulling in any micro front end it only exposes components that are being used in micro front ends above them if that makes sense if you think of them like parent and child the shell is kind of like the parent of the two remotes and they pull in components from those micro front ends and the remote 2 is very similar it exposes different a different component here now this has like i said a server and it has a definition for the server module federation i'm not really going to go into that uh, because basically very similar is just for the node server instead of the client react app cool now in my shell application i can see here this is the shell everything in red is the shell then we have remote one which is the green and remote two which is the blue and react suspense is a great way to import components from the micro front end basically because these are gonna be imported from another place this means that um, lazy load them and then show them here so this is coming from remote one and this is coming from remote two and if we see here in the inspect element if i refresh we can see the remote entry from localhost 3001 the remote entry from localhost 3002 and these are these are the two remotes and then the shell has the main js which is from localhost 3000 now i could import one of the micro front ends into the other remotes but i just want to show an example of a shell importing multiple multiple micro front ends in it and module federation also has another clever thing where it chunks the javascript so it's better um, transferred we have smaller javascript files and it, it can be lazy loaded um, like with the rack, rack suspense and whatnot but yeah that's if you really want to go deeper into it it has a lot of different options now the the one thing that i still haven't figured out maybe there's a solution for this maybe there's not but you can see here that the remote i can't really click into this and go to remote i have to define my micro front ends in the types so the typescript doesn't complain so if i remove one of these you see here that this place is not recognized um, but it's still gonna work, it's just TypeScript is gonna complain and my Visual Studio is gonna complain, which is not great. I, ideally, I wouldn't want to understand what kind of content this has and whatever, but yeah. Um, and they can be interactive with each other. You see here that I'm typing in the shell and the content in the remote one changes and I can do interactive elements in one of the remotes basically you can do whatever you want uh, you can use react however you want to and just to show you that how did how this works is so i have the remote one here open and if i go here and i change this to new content now because i don't have automated reloading here when i build this so i'm in remote one if i build this is going to pick up the new change so i only need to build my one microphone this can be like a it's separate repo usually it will be a separate repo where i can do this make the change test it and deploy it and now that it's built when i refresh here you can see the new content being pulled in and that's essentially how micro front end works the content changes in the remote when you update the website you see the new change that's it um, i hope this example made sense um i'm gonna put a link in the description of a lot of more examples I just found this in like a big github repo with a lot of module federation examples so i'm gonna link that below but i i'm like i said in the beginning i'm a big fan of separation of concerns because that really allows for scalable enterprise level applications and we've had microservices in the back end for a long time and it's great to see the front end catching up with this 
uh, even though this has been out for a while, I know, like 2016 or something, but I don't see a lot of people talking about it. I think it's going to be great and I'm excited to see where this goes. Um, now, Mojang Federation can be a bit tricky if you want to set it up and also Webpack is not the greatest compiler out there. I think this works with other compilers, I haven't really tested myself, but you're more than welcome to try. But anyways, I'm excited to see where this is gonna go, excited to see the new ideas coming forward around this topic, and hopefully now you are as well. And because I think this hasn't reached its full potential yet. So that's been it for this video, thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any feedback, put it down in the comments below, I go through all the comments on my videos. Thank you very much for watching, enjoy the rest of your day, happy coding, bye.